you've got to have some sort of anchor, some known quantity that you can go, okay, whatever it looks like on that screen and that screen, they're going to be wrong by the same amount that everything else is wrong on those displays. If we make our creative decisions based on this known quantity of this display that's calibrated to a precise standard, then at least we know that our starting point is right. If you're grading to that display that's wrong, then you display that on a display that's even more wrong in the same direction. Those things will add up. And a lot of where things go wrong with anything, I guess, but certainly with colour, um, is when things add up in the wrong direction. It's not that one mistake will ruin the film. It's when you get a series of things that add up. So the, the lens is skewing warm and then the colours, uh, the colour balance is set wrong in the camera, too warm. And then you try and grade that warmer and your monitor skewed cold and so you grade it even warmer. Then you play that on a, uh, another screen that's warmer again. You end up with something that's sepia tone that's meant to be colour. The other thing, of course, is that today more and more people are looking at higher and higher quality screens and you really want to be at least one step ahead of the audience. So a lot of screens now, like it used to be that people would joke, well, what does it matter if people are just going to be watching it on their phones? A lot of the screens on the phones will be the highest quality image that people will see a project on these days. You know, you've got the, the, the current iPhone, I think, is 1200 nits, P3 color space. It's way beyond what a cinema screen can show. And so, yes, they may be watching it, holding it in their hand on a train, but the image quality there is actually very, very good. And so we, we really need stable, controlled grading monitors to be able to keep up with that.